This is Between Pages with Mike Dula and Bukowski. Yeah. Am I saying this right? Is it Bukowski? Yeah. Bukowski. Yeah. Yep. Bukowski. I can say it however I want. You can say how you want. Yeah. You're a foreigner. Why do they say corner of the eye? Eyes have no corners. It's such Any a random eye. thought. Yeah. You a pimp? You're killing yeah. yourself. Yeah. You're poisoning yourself. And against drugs. That's disgusting. But then you have people like Karl Marx who says religion is the opiate of the masses. Definition of a nice neighborhood, a place you couldn't afford to live in. This pulp is a pulp fiction novel, which acts also as a meta pulp. That's uh, a lot of pulp. So pulp comments on the obsessions of the pulp fiction genre, making fun of itself as stereotypical of the genre in the grimiest form. Bukowski dedicates the story to bad writing as Bukowski did not plan his mystery novel well and frequently wrote Nicky Blaine into holes from which he could not escape. Bukowski wrote some of the most violent, cynical, sarcastic, and shocking work during the final months of his life. Many critics have agreed his novel, or this novel, exemplifies Bukowski showing an acceptance of his own pending mortality. Uh, so it's a convoluted detective story about a hard-boiled private eye who solves his case by waiting them out. Pulp evokes Raymond Chandler, an author who lived in Los Angeles and set stories there as Bukowski did. Uh, the novel also bears similarity to some works by Deschal Hamet, and the names of character Nikki Blaine rhyme suggestively with the name of author Mickey Spillane, as well as Casablanca's main character, Rick Blaine, although I think that's a stretch. So the main characters are Nikki Blaine, Lady Death, Red Sparrow. The Red Sparrow is not really a character, but uh, it's a it's a it spoof. Is, it, it is interesting though. Yeah, it's a spoof of uh, the Black Sparrow Press, owned by John Martin, who is parodied, parodied as John Barton in the novel. The Red Sparrow symbolizes the com coming of Blaine's and Bukowski's own death. Blaine gets enveloped by the sparrow in the way a dead writer gets absorbed by his words as printed, in this case, by Black Sparrow Press. And Black Sparrow Press and John Martin, uh, if I have my facts right, uh, John Martin actually did like a bet, or not a bet, but he basically said, I'll support you to Charles Bukowski at the beginning of, it, beginning of his career and said something like, I'll give you $50 a month, every month, if you just keep writing to support your, your work. Or maybe it was 500 It was some like really low amount of work, no, yeah, yeah. amount of money, well, but uh, that's how Bukowski supported himself to begin with. What did you think? It's mentioned in here at the beginning of bad yeah, I was writing. Yeah, that's the first thing I was yeah. going to mention is, uh, you know, it says it's dedicated to bad writing. And what, what did you think when you first saw this? That he's a cool guy. Well, yeah. You know, because if somebody says it's a bad writing... What it, you know what I mean? If I say, oh, this is a bad record yeah. for a music record, if I create it or if I write a piece, right. I'm going to say that's a bad one. I don't know if I'm, you know, the, you as, I as a reader, I didn't know if he's a sarcastic guy or he's actually talking, you know, yeah. but I think he's making fun of that. But once you started reading it, you were like, yeah, he's definitely a sarcastic guy. Yeah, 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 because he's making, basically he's making fun of this predictable stuff that is happening Right. As as this page said, is stereotyping. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's making fun of that. Hey, this is exactly what it is. Yeah. You know. Well, you know, that's what I. At first, I was thinking, okay, you know, he's doing a spoof on the pulp fiction uh, genre, mm -hmm. so he's making fun of that. He's making fun of like these characters and kind of putting things in this weird, you know, kind of sarcastic, cynical light. And so at first, I thought he was saying, "Oh, dedicated to bad writing," as you know, that was another joke. You know, it was just a, another big joke, it, just making fun of this genre in general. But as I started reading it, when you get to the end and you realize that even though it is a spoof, it's a you know, funny novel, it's a serious novel too. Yeah. It's really important it and is. deals with some of the bi biggest questions every human has. And so, um, you know, after reading through it and getting through that, dedicated to bad writing, okay, well, what could that actually mean then? Because, you know, yeah, it's, it's the joke in terms of that this is a spoof, but, but what else is it? Well, he's dedicated to bad writing because, you know, his entire career, he had critics that said, oh, this guy doesn't know how to write, he's a piece of shit, blah, blah, blah. 
So he dedicated his life to his own writing, and people said it was bad. But I think it even goes beyond that because, you know, like reading this, it's really good writing. Like it's, it puts an image in your head and it's easy to get through and it's, it's quick and there's just so much to it. I, I thought it was some of the best writing I've ever read. Good writing, subjective, I mean, of course. Yeah, but you know, you're a writer too, so you're looking at it a little bit different than maybe I'm doing it. You know, I'm reading it more. It has to be entertainment for me. It has to be fun. And which it was. Yeah. I'm sure it has to be fun for you too. Yeah. But, you know, you, you judge it more the way, oh, he did this, this, this way. He wrote this, this way. Yeah. I was amazed how he finished this stuff. You know what I mean? He was, he didn't go a lot into the details, but he still did. Yeah. And I love that. Well, yeah, and he, he doesn't he, describe he doesn't, the doesn't, scene. Because or... I don't have to know. Right. Because I know already. It's in your head. It's in my head. You so I paid, exactly. It's, yeah. it's. It, it leaves you a room to do your You don't own. need to know that he Maybe. walked down 2nd Street, went three blocks, no. took a left exactly. at, at yeah. Charles, walked two more blocks, got to the place, looked around, described the place. There's nothing here. It's walked back up. You don't need to say it's all that stuff. It's not necessary in this book. Right. It's great. But this stands out because it's not like this. Because almost every, every, like a chapter ends that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? It ends like, mm -hmm. oh, this happened. Okay, so great. Matter of fact, and I know. And I'm yeah. not disappointed. Oh, I want to know what happened. Right. I would be disappointed if he would explain. But you do want to know what happened next. Exactly. Because you're excited about yes, the story. Yes, but the minimal stuff that are, that are just normal for everybody. You yeah. know this is happening. You know, why you need to describe me that deeper right. inside. You know what I mean? Well, that's the thing too. Like, you know, um, with traditional good writing... It's built around grammar, you know, good grammar. You gotta have good grammar. You gotta have complete sentences. You can't have run ons. You can't have sentences that are too short. You can't have sentences without subjects, et cetera, et cetera. And he does, he does a lot of that type of stuff in here that would be considered bad writing, mm -hmm. but it works really well because it's very conversational and it's very, um, you know, it seems like it's, it's how we talk. Yeah. And he writes like you talk. Yeah, and I, I would say that's, that's, yeah, it's bad writing, but like you said, it's great imagery and it's great entertainment. But he still has such a great observations inside that yeah. doesn't give you that regular stuff. Right. For, for example, I have it open here. What page is it? It's page 20. 20. And he said, I watched two flies fucking, then decided to call Lady Death. Yeah, and there's so much said in that. He doesn't, he doesn't expand on it. No, but, but think about it. You know, who... Everybody saw that. Yeah. Everybody saw flies. But, you know, nobody thinks like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm just watching these two flies. Yeah. You know, but then this is... For me, when I read that, I was like, huh, yeah, it's what a cool... Well, it's I funny. stopped, you know, I stopped a little bit. I was like, huh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's funny at first. It's cool. And then you, you start to think about it and go, huh. Two flies fucking. That's so insignificant. Yeah, but it's... You know, but, but he pointed it out. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't point out a whole lot of things, but he pointed that out. Yeah. And then, so is there a deeper meaning to that? And I feel like that's all his stuff, you know? It's yeah, like, but it's, it's so simple and so matter-of-factly, but then you go, oh my gosh, there's so much more to this. I, yeah. I don't know what and exactly, it's, And it's but, normal. I mean, obviously, flies fuck. Yeah. And why you wouldn't talk about this? You know, right. why you wouldn't mention it? Yeah. You know, it made me stop and... Like I said, you know, there's more than just, hey, right. two flies, you know. And it's, yeah. maybe it's not, probably it's not. It's just, hey, look at these two flies, yeah. you know. You know, I was, I was driving the other day and um, saw, saw a dead animal on the side of the road. And I went, oh, my gosh, you know, that's, that's so terrible. That animal got hit and then it just died on the, the side of the road. And mm -hmm. that was that. And, um, <laughs> you know, it's, but, but then you start thinking, well, you know, what did that animal live for? For you know, dying on the road. <laughs> for dying on the road? Or, or did, it, did it live just to procreate and, and, and have another, you know, animal? But then, then what, what, what's, what's it matter in the scheme of things? And, you know, that's the two flies fucking is so important to the rest of the story because the story is so mundane and nothing happens in the story. Things happen and they come and they go, but, but there's no real, there's never progress because because he just waits around and lets things happen yeah, to but him. This is, this is life. But that's, that's what, like, yeah. but the, then you get to the end of the book, 
and it happens, yeah. And it happens. It, it, the, the universe opens up to him, or you know, he's yeah. brought into heaven, or however you want to interpret it, or yeah. he dies and he sees the light. Um, not to ruin anything, but... I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If, if you're listening, you... Yeah. You're going to be spoiled. Book, so yeah. what? Fuck. Yeah, or you don't know about the book, and now you don't have to read the book. No, you have to read it anyway. I mean, That's true. I know, you know, but you people, you, people say, oh, don't spoil it for me. I don't care if you spoil it for me. Yeah. I really, I, I never like it when people say, oh, don't spoil it for me. Because, so what? You yeah. know, please, spoil it. Because if I know the end is good, then I'm going to, oh, I got to see how that was made, how what that was written, how this was this. Yeah. You know, but so what if I know yeah. what it's going to end? I'm still, I still want to see it. Still going to be the same, I guess, it does bring some feeling of, oh, I didn't know, no, I'm surprised. Yeah. It does bring that excitement in the people which but I get it but, but if it's, it's good entertainment and if it's thought provoking and exciting it and to bring it, even you're going to you know enjoy it, it even exactly. if you know about it it's that's okay. why people watch movies over and over again yeah. or read books over and over again or listen to records because it's, it's you always find something new yeah you, you know in the music, music is a perfect yeah, example because yeah. you know you you create these things that people will pop in their cd player or pull up on their their phone and they'll just listen to the same song over and over again or the same album over and over again and it's an it, it's a different experience every time you do yeah. it and sometimes it's background sometimes it's foreground if you're listening to a record you know you're you're immersed in that yeah i mean people read the same things with the books i read some books twice or even three times because i like them you know and I'm then you share them with other people, and you read them with those other people. Yeah. Like, for the next one, we're going to read uh, White Tiger. Yeah. And I read it already. You but know. you wanted to share that. And I want to read it again. Because it was, it. yeah, because I did, read it like a couple of years ago, and it's just, I'm excited to do it again. I don't know what, it, shit. I don't know what is happening, but it's, you know. Right. You know the show, Bored to Death, and yeah. it's, uh, what is that guy I love? Um... The guy that's in Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah, I, I always forget his name. I can't remember his name either. Ted Danson. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Ted Danson and uh, Jason Schwartzman, right? Mm-hmm. Is yeah, this Schwartz- is how you say Schwartzman? Yeah. Yeah. So chapter nine. nine. Yeah. So I'm just gonna read this. I'm your man. I'll name her ass. <laughs> yeah. Because this was based. This is like similar to that. Bored to that is this, he's decided to be a private de- detective and right, it puts was just out of nowhere, right? Yeah, and he puts on the on the on the Craigslist that he's he's no he's a writer, you know. Right. And but he wants to experience what it's yeah, like. Yeah. So he gets and he's always oh I'm gonna nail her ass. So that kind oh, of oh he does yeah he says I'm gonna nail her ass. So you think I'm, I'm th- you think, think Bored so. to Death was based on I don't pop? think it's based, but but it was influenced by it. I, I can say yes. Because who, you know, see who the writer is. Uh, jo- Jonathan yeah. Ames. But the, the, the interesting thing is uh, Jonathan Ames yeah. is the, the main character name is Jonathan Ames. So that's another Bukowski type thing to do I, too. That's what I think. You know what I mean? And so, he, looks, he looks like he would read Bukowski. Yes. Just look at him. Just type in Google right now, does Jonathan Ames read Bukowski? <laughs> Let's see what happens. Oh. Maybe, maybe we should call this Between Googles instead of Between Pages. Just do a search for, uh, yeah, right here. So, yeah. so under print, while yeah. the New York Press has, co- or while at the New York Press, his columns were also often recollections of his childhood neuroses and his unusual experiences written in the gr- gritty tradition of Charles Bukowski. So, you know, he was yeah. influenced by yeah, Bukowski. Yeah, it looks like. I mean, if you, if you, because this kind of reminded me, and you see my note, I put bored to that, because I was, it, it's a great show, by the way. It's a, yeah, I've it's watched top a five. Episodes. And he's just, that's how he is. That's how, how the, the, that's cool. the main character in the pulp book, Yeah, that's how the, the guy in Born to that it, is. It, he feels Not, very he's, much like uh, Blaine. Yeah. So Jonathan Ames in that, he's the skinny little scrawny guy. He's kind of, you know... He, he's not as badass as Blaine. No, but and he's not as true. depressing. Either. I mean, like that guy's depressing. You think uh, the Blaine is badass? Yeah, in a depressing kind of way. Yeah. What well, his detective moves? Or in bored to that, he was. Uh, it came from depression. Well, 
you can no, say depression because the, the girl. girlfriend yeah. or wife or whatever left him. Right. So he, you know what I mean? Started doing that stuff. Even the, just the team song, not the team song, just the team, like the intro to it. It's, it's, it's this. Really? It's this. Let's watch it. You want to watch it right now? Yeah, let's watch it. There we go. There you go. Yeah. So what are we searching for? Board yeah. to uh, intro. That intro. There we go. Because of the legal stuff, we're going to cut this out. Well, this is what Bukowski, Bukowski is doing yeah, in Nepal. Absolutely. I mean, the, the main character. You know, so I saw some similarities to that. Yeah. And as we saw it, it's right. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Oh, one more thing before you. So in the same page, said, I think somebody gave him some photo of somebody. And I'll return and I'll finish. Here's the photo, whatever. And I paid, and I put it in my wallet. And I said, "How necessary is this?" And I I'll put, put it, it in, in my, my wallet. wallet. Just this. Yeah. Because you know, somebody gave him some photo. Right. Of somebody. Yeah. It it doesn't this detail. You see, it's this small detail that it's kind of, it tickles me a little bit. Like I put it in my wallet. Where but he doesn't wallet? talk about looking at it. He doesn't explain it. Ex no, no nothing. He just says, nothing. Put it in my wallet. You know. Most writer, I'm not saying most writer, but if I would be writing, I would, I would just say, I would talk about that photo. Right. And then not even, you know, put it in a pocket or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's, right. this is exact. Because what do you do with photos? You put them in a wallet. Right. Where do you keep photos? But those, are, those are important photos of people you love and, and you know. And this one is not important. Yeah, in not the, at well, all. In this case, he needs to find this. Right, but why the wallet? Because you don't lose wallet. You always have wallet with you, right? That's true. And yeah. you always have some photos in. Right. Well, small stuff. Right. You know, so it, it, it kind of is a cool thing. See, so at the beginning, I didn't know that Dick means detective. Oh, really? Because, you know, this, this was new to me as, you know, not being right. my first language. Yeah. And then in the second, third page, yeah. I figured it out. You, had you, a you, have a, you have a different image of Dick in your mind. Yes. <laughs> At the beginning, I was like, okay, maybe he's making fun of himself. You know, because yeah, you yeah, say, yeah. that guy's a dick. Right. You know what I mean? And I was, okay, he's just making fun of himself as I'm a dick. You know, and then I figured it out, obviously, that it's yeah, detective. You know you, what I mean? But, you know, speaking, speaking of dick, he has a lot of uh, dick talk in here. You know, he's, he's always talking about pricks, you know, you prick. And then he's talking about, um, you know, other, other places. I can't. Can't find them, but, but, but he talks about penises a lot too, yeah. just in general. Why not? And I wrote here. I said lots of uh, sexualized language. Bukowski draws penises like the kid in Superbad, but with words. You remember the, how the kid in Superbad? He would. Did you ever see that movie? No. Superbad. I know which movie you're talking about, but yeah, uh, yeah. But you know, in the movie, the kid he has like this obsession with drawing penises. Well, speaking of penises, oh, go ahead. No, no, Bukowski. I mean, he's constantly. Well, bored obsessed to that. with it. Bored to that. If we go back to that, sure, yeah. The 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 Zach fella, yeah. go whatever. Uh -huh. He's a comic writer, and he makes a superhero with a long dick. Oh right, yeah, I do remember that. Remember? You? Yeah. So again, so again, something yeah. Bukowski. Did. Those aims just blatantly ripping off Bukowski. Right. In a good way. In a, a respective way. But that's... It's not ripping off. That's it, how it is. Isn't that all writing? Or all creative work? I mean, look at the hip-hop scene. Right. Sampling. Yeah. Everybody's taking some piece of something and but even, creating better. Look up well, this quote. Because better. Because right. there was someone who said something like... Um, it was Oscar Wilde. Type in Oscar Wilde quotes on creativity. Because the quote, the quote was something like... True friends stab you in the front. <laughs> That's well, a good one. But, it, but it, it's a quote about, like, you know... He was... No, no art is, is original. We're all stealing from someone past. Yeah, because you... I mean... It's hard to create something super new. Because, right? we, you know, we all create with our influences in the back of our mind. Exactly. The music we listen to, the movies we watch, the books we've read, uh, the, the, the thoughts we've people. shared and with others, you know, people give us thoughts yeah. and then we take them and make them our own. But that defines you as well. 
it does define I mean? you. Yeah, I mean, you, you can. Well, that's what originality and creativity is. It's the sum of all parts. Yeah. It's not just one thing or one influence. Yeah. It's it's the sum of everything. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever read any uh, Jorge Borges? He's an Argentinian writer. No. He has this short story where um, this guy sits down to write a novel. Mm -hmm. And he ends up writing a novel and he finishes it. Mm -hmm. And when he finishes it, he realizes that it's an exact copy of Don Quixote. I or he, told me that. Yeah, he, he doesn't realize it, but it's, yeah. it's relevant to this. He doesn't realize it um, because he's never read Don Quixote. But everyone else says, oh, this is a ripoff of Don Quixote. Yeah. And so, so Borges' idea is, well, if it's a creative act and the universe allows for something to exist twice, mm -hmm. two people to create the same work mm -hmm. separately at different times uh, in a different way, mm -hmm. but they come up with the same thing, mm -hmm. is one more original than the other one? I mean, the, the probability it's, that that happens is like slim to none, it's slim, yeah, but, but it's, a, it's, a, it's something we have to think about. You know, you know we talk about creativity and how um, someone like Jonathan Ames can take a lot of plot points from a, a mm -hmm. book like Pulp and make them into a TV show that's really good and stands on its own. Mm -hmm. But when you compare them, you're like, uh, you know, you can say, oh, Jonathan Ames, he just ripped off Bukowski. But did he really? No, it, it no. was just his influence, you know. Yeah. The, it's Similar circumstances that drove both of these writers, maybe. Yes. And that's how creativity grows, too. And that's right. how art grows. You see, from the book to a show, a show to a great yeah. show, you know. And it's not just like, you know, every other Hollywood movie that just takes a book and does its own spin on it. He actually, he made it about him. Yes. The main character is Jonathan yeah. Ames. Yeah. This is about him now. It's, a, it's, a, it's just great. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for listening. Next time we're going to talk more in depth about Lady Death, sex, and uh, how these things relate in Charles Bukowski's pulp.